Hey, how's it going? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit, where we teach you how to lose weight without counting calories or doing exercise that you hate. Today's topic is gonna be all about how to lose weight or lose body fat without losing muscle. All right, so we're gonna talk about three major things. The first thing is making sure that you get enough protein per day. All right, that's a huge part of making sure that you don't lose muscle while you're trying to lose body fat. Tip number two is making sure that you get enough resistance training. All right? If you're not training your muscles to grow, they're not going to grow. So we have to make sure we have some level of resistance training. And then tip number three is going to make sure that we are not setting so low a caloric deficit that we aren't, you know, that we're gonna be burning muscle instead of burning body fat. So those three things are gonna be your top three priorities. Keep in mind also that the more muscle mass you have on your body, the more calories you burn doing absolutely nothing. So the higher your metabolic rate is going to be. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn just sleeping and walking around and doing kind of your everyday tasks. So keeping muscle on your body is super important. So let's talk about the first one uh, just to get started. So making sure that you get enough protein every single day. So what is the kind of the requirement or what's the kind of formula that you can use to help make sure that you get enough protein every single day? Well, on average, you wanna to try to get anywhere between 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So let's take, for example, me. Let's say that I weigh 200 pounds. I wanna to aim to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 grams of protein per day. Now, if you're somebody who's 250, 300 pounds, you don't necessarily need to get one gram of protein per pound of body weight every single day. There are some limitations to it. You don't need to go so high uh, if, you're, if that's your body weight. Uh, you wanna keep it probably around 200 grams if you weigh anything above 200 pounds. Now, I also want you to keep in mind that you wanna keep this in a range, right? It's not like if you don't get your one gram per pound of body weight of protein that your muscle's just gonna fall off your body, right? That's not gonna happen. So I like to give a range of anywhere between, like let's say again, I weigh 200 pounds and my goal is to get one gram per pound of body weight in protein. My range might be anywhere between 165 to 200. That way I have kind of a range that I always need to fall into. If you're doing macros or anything like that, it'll show it as a percentage, but somewhere in that range is going to make sure that your body is going to keep the protein that it has on it instead of using that for energy in the future. All right, so that's tip number one. All right, tip number two is making sure you're doing some level of resistance training. Okay. It's really important to understand that resistance training is really the only way in which you are going to build muscle in a long-term fashion. All right, Things like running and traditional cardio, if you're very, very, very new to exercise, might build a little bit of muscle, but it doesn't have a very long shelf life in terms of build, being able to build muscle over time. So what you want to do is prioritize some kind of resistance training. If you're kind of starting at ground zero, that might mean body weight. That might mean doing light you know, durations of resistance training in the form of weights or kettlebells or dumbbells or whatever it might be. So you don't necessarily have to get under a barbell right away if you're very new and you're just trying to get your feet wet in the entire you know exercise world and the weightlifting world, but you have to do some level of resistance training because that's the only way your body is going to build muscle. It has to be kind of forced to break down muscle in order to build muscle. So what are some specifics in terms of recommendations? I recommend if you're just getting started, two days a week is just fine. You can really get a lot done with two days a week. If you're kind of like at the end of your beginner stage and you're just now getting into the immediate level, then three times a week, uh, full body workouts are great. And by the way, one of the kind of rules that I like to have for my clients or anyone that I'm recommending this to is if you're only doing twice a week of some type of resistance training, make sure it's full body because you're, you're gonna hit those different body parts two different times a week, and that's gonna be even better for building muscle. If you're kind of a veteran or you've been someone who's been doing kind of a full body split for a while, then I would recommend you know th maybe three, four, five times a week splitting different muscle groups into like chest and back and things like that. So again, that's, that's you know more advanced than you probably need right now, but that's the kind of way you wanna think about it. So two to three days of strength training or some type of resistance training is paramount for making sure that you keep muscle on your body. Your, bo your body does not prioritize muscle. It's kind of a luxury tissue in a sense uh, because your body is always prioritizing survival. So if you're not eating enough, which is what might happen if you're in a caloric deficit that's too big, uh, your body's going to burn muscle for energy. Now, it doesn't just happen overnight. It's going to happen over time. But in a lot of cases, if you're not giving it a reason to keep muscle around, it's just going to get rid of it. All right, so tip number three and our last tip is going to be making sure that your caloric deficit is not too low. 
So I'll go ahead and post right here. There'll be a little link that comes up over the top. Uh, going back to my caloric deficit video, if you're not really sure what that is and how to set an accurate one, you can check that video out and it will give you all the information that you need. But you wanna make sure that you have a caloric deficit that is moderate and not huge. So I'll give you an example. If my calorie maintenance is 2000 calories and I know that I need to decrease that a little bit in order to create a caloric deficit, let's say 300 calories, now my caloric deficit or my, my, my calories that I'm trying to hit is 1700, I wanna to try to keep that to minimize muscle loss, all right, in accordance with the other two tips that I gave you, getting enough protein and resistance training. Because if I have such a large caloric deficit, let's say that I, I'm supposed to be eating 2,000 calories to keep my weight the same, and I go all the way down to 1,300 calories, my body is going to be burning calories rapidly. And if I'm burning calories, a lot, a lot of calories rapidly like that, it's going to look for muscle to supplement some of that energy that it probably can't get from fat just simply because of how the body works when it comes to burning fat. So making sure that your calorie deficit is moderate for maintaining muscle mass, but also for maintaining the longevity of burning fat. The more moderate your caloric deficit is, the longer you'll be able to burn fat. So I just wanna make sure that that's crystal clear that if you have a very large calorie deficit, there's a good chance you will, over time, burn more muscle, especially if you're not getting those other two uh, factors, getting enough protein and resistance training. All right, so that's my video today. Thanks a ton for taking time out of your day to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, there's a comment section down below where you can ask those questions. And if you don't mind, please like this video so the reach can get to more people who have this exact same question on YouTube. And then if you like this video and you wanna see more videos just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified when new videos come out and it can be right on your YouTube feed so you don't miss a beat. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in a future video. Absolutely nothing. Have you any idea why? I love getting spawned on B and then just instantly shot. And I got killed by a thermite because I ran into it.